Hi everyone! This week we are going to talk about actually two musicians. Um, one is W.S. Gilbert and one is Arthur Sullivan and they worked together. Um, they were British um, working between about 1870 and 1895 working together. Um, so it's the height of the Victorian Empire, um, the, the, the Victorian period, the British Empire, um, Queen Victoria being the Empress of India, all of that. Um, and the genre that they worked in is called operetta. So that would translate to kind of like a cute little opera. It's kind of like opera's fun younger cousin. And um, sometimes it's called light opera. And the reason it's lighter is that it's it's kind of lighter in style and lighter in subject matter. Um, and it's shorter too. Shorter than a traditional opera. Um, comic. So funny. And there was comic opera before this, but operettas are always going to be comic. Um, just kind of more lighthearted music in general too. And also operettas have spoken dialogue. So a traditional opera has everything sung. The part that we might consider kind of songs are called arias. And the parts that would, you might think would be spoken, where characters are talking to each other, is actually sung as well. That's called recitative. But in operetta, you don't have recitative. You have arias that are songs, but then the, the dialogue is actually spoken. So this is kind of the bridge. Operetta is kind of the bridge between opera, which had been written since the Renaissance, is when opera started developing through the Baroque and Classical and Romantic periods. And here in the later part of the Romantic period, you get operetta that kind of forms the bridge to the 20th century, the 1900s, when we start having musical theater. Um, so that's one of the reasons that operetta is important historically. So in this duo of Gilbert and Sullivan, um, Sullivan was the composer and Gilbert was the, what we'd call the librettist. So kind of what today, um, for a musical you'd call the lyricist, um, in an opera or an operetta, the, um, the words, the whatever sung and whatever spoken in the case of operetta would be called the libretto. So the um, person who writes the libretto is called a librettist. So Sullivan's the composer and Gilbert is the librettist. And we, if you, if you talk to any musician about Gilbert and Sullivan, they'll know who you're talking about. Um, <clears throat> so I chose t some, a couple songs from two of their most famous operettas. Um, and they kind of illustrate some of the characteristics of Gilbert and Sullivan's operettas. Um, so like I said, they're funny. They're, they're very funny. They're just, they have these absurd plots. Um, but one of the things that's funny about them is the, the whole story and the characters, everything is just zany and crazy, but it's like the characters are very serious at the same time. It's like, uh, most of the time, it's like they don't know that, that the plot that they're in is just ridiculous, but you do get these little moments where it's kind of like they realize they're in this, this ridiculous play. Um, let's see. They, they were also um, written... Uh, they, they have funny stories that are very engaging, but they're also written as like social commentary. So um, Gilbert, with his libretto, is kind of commenting and criticizing certain things about the culture they lived in. Um, so the first one that I chose is called Pirates of Penzance, and there's um, two songs from that. So the basic premise, if you watch the first one, I Am a Pirate King, is it's these pirates, and there's a young man getting into a lifeboat and leaving the pirate ship, and his name is Frederick, and he was, I believe, kidnapped by the pirates when he was younger, but now that he has reached a certain age as a young adult, the pirate code is allowing him to make a decision whether to stay with the pirates or whether to leave and go rejoin polite society. And he is choosing to leave, and the pirate king is singing about how great it is to be a pirate, and he doesn't understand why you'd ever want to leave. Kind of like, yo-ho, yo-ho, a pirate's life for me. Kind of like that. But you can kind of get a sense from how... Um, he keeps almost falling off the ship and things like that, that these are pretty hapless pirates. Like, these are not pirates who are very good at being pirates. So that's one of the things that's kind of ridiculous. Um, and then the second song from Pirates of Penzance is probably one of Gilbert and Sullivan's most famous songs. It's called I Am the Very Model of a Modern Major General. 
And so what's going on here is that these pirates, Fred Frederick has come ashore and run into this group of maidens. There is always, in Gilbert and Sullivan, there's always this group of maidens, these young unmarried women who come into contact with men so that there can be a romantic um, storyline going on. So he has run into these, this chorus of, or this group of maidens who are all sisters, and then the pirates come ashore, and so at first the women are scared that these pirates are going to kidnap them, but then they say, no, no, you can't kidnap us because our father is a major general, uh, like an officer in the British army. And he comes on stage, and it's very clear that he's not a very frightening um, m military officer. He's ridiculous. And here you get a little moment where, again, the, the um, characters, or, or at least in, in one of the characters, the Pirate King, kind of realizes how ridiculous this whole situation is because they start, the characters start singing the I Am a Pirate King song, but with the words, he is a major general. And the Pirate King says, wait a minute, that's the Pirate King's music. Um, so it's funny because he's realizing that this whole story is just crazy. Um, but then the, the Major General goes on to sing about being, uh, about what a wonderful general he is. <clears throat> and what he's singing is called a patter aria, P-A-T-T-E-R. And it's like a tongue twister. So on this one, um for parents or for kids who are proficient readers, I would suggest turning the subtitles on on the video. The subtitles for the Pirate King song are not very good, they're not very accurate, but on I Am the Very Model of a Modern Major General, they are really good and they allow you to kind of see what the words actually are because they go by so fast that um, it's hard to keep up with them. But patter arias were, Mozart wrote patter, patter arias, um, they're just a fun thing that in comic opera and in operetta was a, was very common because they're they're just ridiculous and fun and they fit kind of the, um, the feeling of the music of being zany and crazy. Um, and here is where Gilbert and Sullivan are kind of commenting on British society because here you have this general who says he's the model of a general, he's a wonderful general, and yet he's even admitting that he doesn't really know very much about it and he's not very good at it. So kind of making fun of how a lot of people in positions of authority sometimes don't really know that much about what they're doing and aren't really very qualified or good at their jobs. So something we maybe see today, even in our society today. Um, so those are two songs from the Pirates of Penzance. And then the other song that I picked is from one of their other most famous operettas called The Mikado. And it is set in um, a kind of ridiculous version of Japan because um, there was a fascination with Japanese culture at the time. And what's going on in this song um, is that you have these two young people. Um, the girl's name is Yum Yum and the man's name is uh, Nanki Poo. And they live in, or they, they met at some point in the past and were separated, and now they have reunited by chance. Um, but in the meantime, unfortunately, you know, they met and they fell in love, but then they were separated. And since they've been separated, Yum Yum has become engaged to an older, kind of undesirable um, man named Coco. And um, so now, the, it's kind of like an arranged marriage sort of situation. And so now that the younger man who had previously fallen in love with Yum Yum has been reunited with her. They are singing about how unfortunate it is that they um, they can't show any affection because that's against the law. Um, and so they're saying, oh, we'll never kiss, we'll never put our arms around each other's waist or anything like that, even as they're actually doing it. So it's just a cute, fun song. Um, and maybe when you listen to that one, you might think, I think it, it sounds kind of like something that could almost fit into an American musical from the... Um, 1950s or something like that. So um, I hope you like these songs. Um, the the production of the Mikado is what you would see if it's it's just a video of a live stage production. So that's what you would how it might look if you go to it or to go to a theater to see it. Um, the Pirates of Penzance is a Hollywood movie that was made in the 1980s. Um, so it looks a little bit different in terms of it's not on a stage the way that the Mikado is. Um, but they're both good productions of operettas by um, Gilbert and Sullivan, written um, during the Victorian era in England.